Good afternoon, and I would like to welcome you to this session at um, the Scottish Learning Festival. Um, I, if I could remind people just to keep your microphones off, um, we will be recording the session, so um, probably best to keep cameras off unless you want to, <laughs> to feature in the recording. Um, you will have the opportunity to ask questions. Please use the chat feature to do that, and we hope that um, you will be able to um, answer questions at the end of the session. Um, also, if you're tweeting, then please could you use the hashtag SLF online, which means that we can kind of follow along and um, you know, con comment on, on your tweets, etc. So um, I'm absolutely delighted to be welcoming to the session um, Claire Crawford, Esther Waldron and Charlotte Tether from Scottish Borders Council, and they are going to be speaking to you today about the early years portal that has been developed um, in, in Scottish Borders. Uh, Claire Crawford is the Improvement and Support Officer for Early Years. Um, Charlotte Tether and Esther Waldron are Early Years teachers working in the borders and supporting settings throughout Scottish borders. Um, I know that you're going to find this session really interesting. I think the uh, process of thought that has gone into this Early Years portal um, it will be really useful, particularly if you are uh, in a central team and thinking about um, all of the guidance and information that's out there for people and helping them manage that um, in a really accessible way. So um, before I keep on talking, I'm going to pass over uh, to Claire Crawford. Thank you, Katrina. Just getting some slides up now. <laughs> we hope. Thank you all for, you know, fingers crossed, no technical gremlins in the in the works. Um, thank you, Katrina, again for your introduction. Thank you all of you for joining us today and um, this afternoon after what will no doubt have been a busy day. Um, Scottish Borders Council Early Years team are passionate about getting it right for our youngest learners and I'm pleased we can be here this afternoon to share what is the final phase of a huge piece of work over a significant amount of time where key messages about quality practice not just in early years but across early level can be linked to key documentation and training. What we're about to share will be available as a digital platform which has been supported by colleagues in Education Scotland and Inspire Learning and they'll be providing links to um, a, a YouTube channel which will host all Scottish Borders early years training packages making them accessible to all practitioners across all sectors. Just going to check sorry Esther the, the slides showing at all I'm not able to see them I'm not seeing them either nor am I so it's border gremlins yeah. you can't take us anywhere <laughs> we bring them with us of course we tested it all and it was all working <laughs> it's always the way yeah, always the way and Esther seems to have frozen. Frozen as well. Charlotte, I don't know if you've have you got the, the slides. It might be worth trying to share them from your computer. Yeah, and can I just remind people to switch off their mics and cameras, please? Can you see that? We can. Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Charlotte. If you want to just go into the next slide. Thanks. Thank you. So as an early years team, our CLPL programme is strategically planned under our authority priorities, which are developing high quality learning, teaching and assessment and inclusive practices. And this development work strongly supports both. We've got a huge amount of pride in the early years training that we produce in Borders. We all know that investing in our staff through the delivery of high quality training allows us to upskill ourselves as practitioners and facilitate professional conversation and the sharing of practice as we know that true improvement in high quality lies within. 
And when practitioners and leaders are knowledgeable in lead change themselves, it has longer term impact. We know that, to quote the, the Quality Action Plan, the single most important driver of the quality of a child's early learning and childcare experience is a high quality workforce. Our peripatetic early years teacher team support pedagogy and practice across our authority through a hub and spoke model of support, targeted and focused support in identified settings, but reaching the wider authority, practitioners and managers alike through our CLPL programme. With this project, our aim is that the key messages of pedagogy and practice will reach even further beyond our CLPL, across broad general education and create a truly joined up approach where we can put these key messages across, providing key links with local, national and international guidance and theory under the universal language of learning, teaching and assessment. There are a huge range of documents guiding early years practice from the curriculum, Higuel, realising the ambition, from your own local authority guidance to the, na the national guidance that we all have. Some guidance changes over time, some are superseded. We know that the sheer volume of professional reading material can be overwhelming and early years is just one part of broad general education. So how does any one person retain all the information each document equally important in its own right gives? And how do we even begin to make sense of how they all link together? For those of you unfamiliar with Simon Sinek, who's a motivational speaker, he uses a model called the Golden Circle to explain how certain leaders and leading companies like Steve Jobs and Apple are able to inspire rather than manipulate in order to motivate people. It's a framework for the why. This to Scottish Borders Council is intrinsic to pedagogy and practice and within the early years umbrella to the role of the early years teacher team and early years CLPL programme, as people have to engage, they have to be motivated and often influenced to take on change. The key messages our early year service give in our training supports, what good practice looks like and how to do this, but what brings about long lasting improvement is that understanding of why. Why do we encourage loose parts? Why do we prioritise observation? When our practitioners understand the why behind what they do, that's when real impact occurs and they can then take ownership of it. In 2018, as an early years team, we began to consider how we pull all of these documents together with our knowledge and experience of pedagogy and practice, as well as our vision and values for early years in the borders into one place which would outline the what good looks like, give that practical advice of how to do it, but most importantly, give the why. And this became the basis for what became the pedagogical wheel and the key message framework. These documents were developed during the initial phase of this work. However, with realising the ambition being published not long afterwards, we knew that what existed was perhaps not needed in that form anymore. And we began to consider the role this development work could have moving before, beyond those documents. It was at this time that the existing framework was put into the capable hands of, of early years teachers Esther Waldron and Charlotte Tether, who are with me today, and they were tasked with marrying up our existing work with realising the ambition. But through Charlotte's involvement with the Scottish Borders Learning, Teaching and Assessment Steering Group, there came a new direction. And I'll now hand over to them, who, because they'll articulate their journey far more beautifully than I can. So I'll hand over to Charlotte and Esther. Thank you. It's literally just starting. Can I just remind people to keep their um, microphones off, please? Over the past six years, our early years teacher team have created a huge bank of resources, training presentations, the pedagogical leadership framework, and a version of the key documents that Claire mentioned. We wanted to create a navigational tool that would enable early years educators to access all this information and make connections existing between all the elements in early years and those key documents that guide best practice. We knew from past experience that there was no longevity in basing our key messages solely on one document as these change over time. It needs to be based on something that underpins all practice and could evolve and be added to organically as needed, keeping it a current resource. But how could we do this? As part of this working party, sorry, I've got the wrong one. Sorry, I've gone to the wrong page, sorry. Um, 
At this time, I was the earliest representative on the Learning Teaching Assessment Working Party and thought this, this could be the natural link that would connect all of these elements together. As part of this working party, we're trying to create a framework where the principles of learning teaching assessment would apply to learners of all ages and with all settings. We discussed this in depth and agreed that although the pedagogy at different stages might look different, the principles would remain very similar. This is a diagram of the agreed top level principles that we came up with. They set out what we believe are the essential components of high quality learning, teaching and assessment that lead to improved knowledge, understanding and skills for learners. We identified and agreed a definition for each of the three elements, learning, teaching and assessment. We treat these elements as independent and interdependent at the same time. Each element can and should be explored separately, but all three elements are intricately linked. Within this framework that we created, it states, our schools and settings should have a learning teaching assessment framework that dr drives a relentless focus on high quality learning and teaching. This highlighted for me the need for a greater shared understanding of the terminology of learning teaching assessment across early level and the educators within it. In February 2020, we realised the ambition the new National Practice Guidance for Early Years in Scotland was launched. With this document, a document's arrival, we knew that we had to reflect on our key message framework to ensure that they were still in line with the current practice so that we could best support practitioners. When cross-referencing this, you can see how, how here we began to interpret what learning, teaching and assessment might look like across the early level. We then cross-referenced the learning teaching assessment framework through the lens of early, early years and could see how all other national documents, our key messages and Scottish Borders training naturally sat under this umbrella of learning teaching assessment. From this, we could clearly see that structuring our proposed guidance around the learning teaching assessment framework would be a natural way forward. It would enable us to have a clear, consistent message with learning teaching assessment at the heart. It would help cement the perception of, early, of, early, uh, of ELC as an intrinsic part of learning, teaching and assessment across early level. It would support all educators at this early level to have a shared and understood language of learning, which would also support greater fluidity across early level and improve practice. This guidance also clearly supports improvements of all SBC key priorities. High quality learning and teaching will be supported through illustrations and examples of good practice with links to relevant documents and continuous lifelong professional learning. The platform encourages and guides all educators in early years at all stages of their professional journey to look inwards, outwards and forwards by making these links to good practice and consistently focusing on self-evaluation and impact. Inclusion and partnership practices are illustrated individually and will also be woven throughout. The very design and execution of the platform aims to empower practitioners at all stages to nurture and build leadership skills. This is further supported, especially for early level practice in the pedagogical leadership section. Given the interconnectivity of all the elements of learning, teaching, assessment, and the golden thread that runs through early level pedagogy, this could only be illustrated through an interactive platform. This helps to both navigate and celebrate these connections. So our vision is that this platform will support high quality learning, teaching assessment across early level and will support Scotland's collective endeavour to build an empowered, connected, self-improving education system to achieve excellence and equity for all children and young people. So hopefully I will now hand you over to Esther for her to guide you through our early level portal a one-stop shop for practitioners to make connections between ongoing professional development, national key documents, and quality learning and experiences. I'm gonna try my very best, Charlotte. That would be good. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I need to go back. Don't I? Can you just okay. let me know if you can see that? Okay. I can. That's good. 
So welcome to the early level portal. And it's at this point I ask for your forgiveness in advance if anything doesn't work on this, <laughs> but I'm asking forgiveness anyway. Um, what we've developed here, we've used um, a PowerPoint because these are just the IT resources that we had at our fingertips as the idea was coming together. And as Claire said, this is going, is, discussions are currently taking place to convert this into what will be a virtual platform. Um, so in the meantime, we'll just hope all the links work. So let's enter the portal. OK, so here um, we have arrived at is a navigation page for the portal, and this is where we make those, you know, illustrate those first links between early level and the learning, teaching and assessment framework. Um, and as you can see under each of the headings for learning, teaching and assessment, um, we have utilised phrases and descriptions that describe what that means at early level. So what I'd like to do is describe this page to you and the, the key areas that we have because um, it's all interactive. And then once I've done that, I'd like to take you on a, a journey through um, the portal as if you in a way that you could use it. So on this page, we have early level pedagogy and it sits underneath all the learning and teaching assessment because it's it's there, it's rooted in everything and we need it to underpin everything that happens. Um, we then have learning, teaching and assessment, and we'll uh, have a look into those in a moment. Uh, this is an area where we relate back to that document that Charlotte mentioned before. Um, and on every page you'll notice throughout the portal, we have a section for self-evaluation for improved outcomes at the bottom there, and at the top, continuing lifelong professional learning. <clears throat> so again, that's things that underpin everything that we do. So if I go into early level pedagogy, You'll see there's a similar theme to how the pages look and um, to help navigate through it. And under each of these headings here, you'll find descriptions about what that means. And further links down the side. Um, with a to tip it so that can navigate you through the portal and to the things that link with our level pedagogy. We go back to this page under child development. We start with these um, descriptions here and um, we like start linking with key documents. So we're we're making those key links with what do the documents mean? Let's put them in practice. Let's um, show how they work within the practice that we do. And under child development, you'll find um, other links here that will take you into, as you can see, nurture family partnerships and obviously delving into attachment and child development. Now, under each of these pages that I'll show you is a very similar setup. Play pedagogy. And again, these are all interactive tabs that would take you um, to those places and linking in with those documents as well. Uh, pedagogical leadership. Slightly different in that this is something we're also working on here. Um, we're working on a pedagogical leadership framework, which is currently under development as well. And we're looking not we're looking uh, um, here at documents within um, Scotland, but also we're looking out with Scotland as well and co collectively gathering all those things together to help us understand and best support the needs of the children. So if we go back here and I'll take you into learning. Um, so how you can support me to grow and develop, what headings do we need? And we decided on these three headings here. Um, what we've got here uh, this bit here is how we link directly back to that document that Charlotte was talking about, the learning, teaching, assessment framework. This is what the learning, teaching, assessment framework says, and this is how it translates into early level. So we'll go into child first. And we'll actually come back to this one shortly. And you can see there is uh, maybe glossary terms that need described here. And again, there we are, the tabs that will take you. To help you support that. Supporting, deepening and extending learning. Again, very similar setup. Something slightly different with the learning environment because what we realised through many discussions is that the learning environment doesn't just sit under learning. The learning environment sits under both learning and teaching. So whether you access this page from learning or teaching, you, you come to the same place. And teaching assessment framework. The other headings we have here is curriculum planning and creating the climate. Again, a very similar setup.
curriculum planning. Also starting to have the documents here. This is very much a working document, as I imagine it will always be, um, but we've started to put the documents in there so you could, um, they'd be hyperlinked to the document online. And if we go back to the last one, assessment. We've got formative assessment, summative assessment and interpreting. Go into formative assessment. And then into summative assessment. Lastly, into interpreting. Making those links back to the framework and to documents there. So if we go back to this navigation page again, we'll just look very briefly at what the self-evaluation for improved outcomes looks like. There's the headings and we will delve into that a little bit later on. And again, the continuing lifelong and professional learning, which we will look at as well. Takes you further. So what I'd like to do now is take you on that little journey I talked about. And the, the portal could work in in two ways in that you could think about a topic that you are are um, wanting to develop. So potentially inclusion, that's what we're going to look at today. And you could go to the contents page and find inclusion or you could be looking to develop um, a learning element. And you could think that we really want to be putting the child first. What can we be doing with that once you go into child first? you can start to have a look. So here we go, there's inclusion. This is something that we could develop to support child first. So if I take you into inclusion, and then it, this pops up this new page, which has got a very similar format to all of the main tabs. Um, they all look very similar to this. We're making those links with those key documents there to get our defini definitions. And then we're starting to look at what does that actually look like across early level? I'm having some key lists here. This is actually quite a long one um, about what that would actually look like. What would good look like? And then delving further still into how do we do this? How would we actually do that in practice? So not only are there the list of things of how you could do that in practice, um, we've actually explored what does that what does that look like in practice um, through these additional tabs down here. And this is by all means not the end of the list and, and, and as this is developed further more things will be added um, where appropriate um, but if I take you into these so we have inclusion as our main heading here and additional needs as a subheading so we're still under the bracket of inclusion and additional needs and essentially what we have here is we've created a list of um, people we would like to get in contact with to see that if and, and we, we've actually begun these conversations so that if you were to click on one of these, then the experts within that field would be able to, if they wanted to, um, add in what maybe contact information and what support materials or links online that could support. So that's um, looking out to our, our, um, other professionals and seeing how they might want to engage in this as well. Um, we have on here documents that would support this practice and in an ideal world and when IT skills or IT skills are better and um, potentially we want to um, to be able to click on that so you can see they're hyperlinked already but and to be able to take navigate you to certain places within those documents and um, so that you can really make those key connections. Also down the side here we have some uh, CLPL training. So, so if we go back here so what else do we have? English as an additional language. Again, that's another subheading we have there. And very similar. But again, look, what did that look like in practice? We might need to then delve further into, say, sensitive interactions, nurture in the learning environment. Now, for instance, if we went to one of these ones, say nurture, that's taking us to a whole new place, a whole other um, main heading there, um, which looks very uh, similar to the inclusion one we were in before. Now, if we just go back to the inclusion page that we were on, um, we have several several of those tabs at the bottom. Um, as you can see, I've opened a couple. Um, but what I'd also like to show you is these elements here that's on every page. So if we go into SBC guidance for inclusion, there we have our key documents, as you would expect. And the national guidance. And like we said, we'd love to make those key links with those elements within the guidance. Uh, looking outwards. And what does looking outwards mean? It can mean many things. Um, 
you know, other people's opinions on inclusion and thoughts. It, it could be resources. It, it could be linking with charities. What does that actually mean? And how can I help support? And then our continuous lifelong professional learning. And so here we have um, SBC learning and these are packages here which we've um, developed as part of the early years teacher team um, in the Scottish borders and they're currently being put onto an Inspire YouTube channel um, like I think Claire spoke about and um, so they would you would click on them and they would take you straight to that once that's up and running and uh, what was quite exciting is these um, resources here from Education Scotland um, the moment they came out we were able to put them straight into the portal and hyperlink them in and so they're already there so anybody who's wanted to look at inclusion there's really up-to-date resources there already so it just showed us how well the portal could work for this for this kind of um, thing so what I'd like to do now is take you into another element of it so if we go um, Take you a look at these subheadings that we had here. And I'll take you into sensitive interactions, which opens up a whole nother page like we looked at before. And once we're in sensitive interactions, um, it's very similar. What good looks like? How does this do? Um, but what we've also got at the bottom of the page here is reflecting on practice with sensitive interactions. And this is the same for every page, just this was a um, example and um, we've chosen to show you today so if you go into reflecting on practice you'll find that we have documents here that's um, that would support us to reflect on practice and what's been um, taken from these is some key questions here that are specifically there for supporting those sensitive interactions and if we continue to the next page there we have the very new uh, care inspector document and similar things being done there now once we've got those questions reflect on practice want to support that further and that's where that self-evaluation for improved outcomes comes in we visited before and so you could go into reflecting on practice and there may be audit tools how to use Higgio, personal plans these kind of things that could all help us to reflect on practice and um, pdsa model and this is a good example because this is something else that we'd like to include in the portal and i've begun including is that if you wanted to use the pdsa um, model you could click on here and there you could actually find the document and download it so it'd be something you could actually take away and use from the portal and measuring impact what does that look like what tools do we have and how can we support that so if we go back to the main page here um this feels like a whistle stop tour and I guess it is um, but if we go to the contents page here what I wanted to just illustrate was that we started an inclusion and we looked there were subheadings there for each of these and from inclusion we could see there was um, we could take it to nurture and um, from there we could go into sensitive interactions and there were many more links that popped up there as well those are just the ones that we clicked on and so it's showing how that um, everything is linked within early level and, and, all, and all learning but it's showing that we're not rewriting it each time and um, it's taking you to where the original information was and how everything is linked and it and we think it does so um, really smoothly and helpfully so the only thing that we've not looked at yet um, from here is this continuing lifelong and professional learning so if we open this up it opens up a kind of another section to the document but very much linked section and in here so throughout the whole portal um, I've shown you that we're trying to link in with documents and guidance and um, looking outwards and what we thought was that we wanted that all to be in one place as well so whatever is within the portal is also being kept in one place as well so if you just wanted to see all the training that was available through SBC you could come to this section of the portal and find all the training not specifically linked to anywhere and you'll be able to spot some that have popped up already If you um, want to see all the borders guidance and documents, dot, 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 we obviously have many more to add in there, um, then there would be one place for them all. This is another exciting section that we've not yet had those conversations with, but I guess this is starting to build up a picture. Of, um, and for example, obviously we mean all regions and um, all Scottish reasons, having those conversations and seeing if anyone's doing something that they would like to link up and joining all our thinking together. Uh, 
very similar. So there are some things that have popped up before those national and international training opportunities. Now this one, this page is going to get much bigger. As you can see, it's already quite full um, because these are just the ones so far that have popped up in the portal. I'm looking outwards. What does you know? What does that look like? All the different ways that we can look outwards. And while I'm on this page as well, at the bottom of all of these pages in the CLPL section, we have the um, Triple SC login and the GTC, and they're so they're hyperlinked there. And so it's encouraging um, any educators that are using this um, portal to then take what they're doing and log into their Triple SC, log into GTC, and record your professional learning and development. That's so trying to make those seamless links between what you're doing. And celebrating good practice. So this would be a, a, an ever changing page of things that are happening, sketch notes, maybe things that are happening in the region, out with the region, um, linking up to different wakelets, um, and of course SIEC, which um is already we've already spoken about. So um it's how we would make create those links to good practice. Now, this is slightly different bit here because it's not quite continuing professional lear learning and it'll maybe sit somewhere else at one point, but this is another collective place to have th all those potential um, professional partnerships so we could have them all in one place. And this one here, all those documents that we talked about um, that we'd like to have those links like the PDSA one, which we need to put in here, <laughs> um, but uh, those links to those actual documents, they could be downloaded and used. And then this last one here, um, breaking news. So this would be uh, one we try and keep really current. And for so for anyone accessing the portal on a regular basis, um, this would be where you could come to find out if maybe a new section would be added, or potentially if there was a Scottish Learning Festival going on, um, and all those things would be you know breaking news. It kind of says what it is. <laughs> um, so that's just something to keep that engagement level with the portal as well. And I think that's the last one on that page. So Charlotte and Claire, unless I've forgotten anything, that is my walk through of the portal that we've been developing in Scottish Borders. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. And thanks, Charlotte, as well. It feels rather incongruous to be here as three people sharing what has been a, a huge amount of work by a number of people over a number of years. And it's a huge thanks to all of them individually and collectively that we're at this point today. We see this as a huge opportunity for us to put the key messages that surround quality early years practice, linking with theory, research and guidance, local, national and international that underpins them, establishing links with our own wider authority work on inclusion, early literacy and numeracy, equity and with the wider work of the SEAT community in one place. Using the shared um, terminology of learning, teaching and assessment, not only do we support our practitioners in ELC to see what they do in those terms, establishing that sense of themselves as an educator, which we absolutely know they are, but we're using the different aspects of early years practice within the language wider educators and leaders absolutely understand, regardless of their experience at this foundational stage. This is a platform that will be interactive and accessible to all. So once the platform is completed, anyone will be able to access this platform from anywhere. It's a platform that will be interactive and accessible. It will allow us as a service to update and review very quickly and easily going forward, as Esther said. So it's very much about supporting high, high quality practice long term. In terms of the next steps, obviously we're, we're currently working just now with colleagues from Education Scotland and Inspire Learning, as I intimated, um, in finalising that platform and the, the early years channel that will host all the early years training. Really want this network to, to this platform to be seamless so that if people click into that these aspects of training, they'll in, immediately be taken onto the, the YouTube channel as well. And then again, once they're finished, they can come straight back to the, the, the platform. Obviously, one thing that we really want to do is to highlight the great practice that we know that goes on in the Scottish borders. And we want to have links not just to our training, but videos of, of people sharing their practice as well across our authority and across early level. And obviously, we want all represented, all the different sectors represented on this as well. You know, early, early level spans, not only ELC, but primary ones. We want good practice shared from our P1 colleagues. We want our funded childminders represented here, our local authority 
local authority practitioners represented, but also we want our private and voluntary partner providers represented as well. So going forward, it'll be really important to have those kind of working parties um, of, of different practitioners and, and managers and teachers that will be using this to share feedback about how it represents them and what things that they need feel they feel they need to have added to it as well to make it more representative and, and current for them. Um, so that really takes us to the end of our presentation. So on that note, I'll hand over to you in case there are any questions. I'd just like to come back here and thank the three of you, Claire, Esther and Charlotte, for sharing that magnificent piece of work. Um, and I don't know if you've managed to keep a, an eye on the chat, but uh, there's so much positive reception um, for it. And I think, you know, um, I'm not a practitioner anymore, but I um, was recently in practice. And I think this would have been a phenomenal resource to know that you could just go to one place and find everything that you need, because it is. I mean, it was interesting seeing that slide with all of the different documentation. It's a very busy landscape. Um, so to have it all brought together and to help people chart their way through it um, is really, really useful. Um, we had a question early on, and I think you answered it, Claire, around okay. whether this was accessible to everybody. Um, my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, is that, that you're still working on the portal. It's not live yet. No, it's not not live yet, Katrina. But once it is, um, obviously, the, the most important thing is to make it right for our authority. But absolutely, oh. we, want, we want this to be a resource that anyone can access because your know, high quality is something that we're all striving for across Scotland. So absolutely, we want other people to be able to access and, and hopefully find useful as well. And I noticed someone also asked about the private and voluntary settings and, you know, absolutely that, you know, that that they are included in that as well. Absolutely. We have um, amazing funded providers working with us in the Scottish borders and we've got a number of, of great um, funded childminders that have just came on our framework as well and, and have already been working within our framework for ELC. So we absolutely want them to be represented because they're a huge part of, of that early level for, for the authority. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if anybody has any other questions. We've got a few minutes left. If anybody would like to ask anything, just pop it into the chat. Um, you know, I'm thinking and I know that there are quite a few um, people from other local authorities um, who I'm sure have been scribbling down furiously and may well take away, you know, some of that thinking and, and those ideas, because obviously you, you've created this for Scottish Borders with Scottish Borders documentation and access to all of your planning documents and things like that. So, um, you know, how will the rest of Scotland know when this goes live? <laughs> well, we, we will let you know, don't worry. <laughs> Maybe a big party. <laughs> <laughs> we, we will absolutely send out our um, information about it when it goes live to our SEAT colleagues and our other collaborative groups across Scotland. So we'll we'll get that information out to everybody. Fantastic. Any anyone else with any questions? Yeah, lots of lovely comments. Lots to be very oh, proud. Actually, nice. Thank you. As I say, it feels very strange for three of us to be here because actually we're a team of 16 in the Early Years Teacher team and you know, there's there's eight of us in the Early Years Central team. So this is really about you know, the hard work of everybody um, that's went into this. So it's very much a, a collective project. It's well, pulling it's, all yeah. that information from everybody that's there Absolutely. into one place, yeah. Absolutely, it's a huge project. I think it's it's just fantastic. And, and perhaps we will find other ways to be able to share it through our networks. Um, and, and I see Sandra suggesting that it maybe could be shared through Scotland Learns, um, you know, so so let us know and we, we can do that. Absolutely. If there are no other questions, um, it's probably the end of a long day for everybody. Um, we have got five minutes left, but um, if there are no other questions, then um, I, I think unless, Claire, you, you've got anything you'd like to add. Maybe I mean, really, just if, if anybody is interested in finding out more about it, obviously, um, my contact details are available on the Early Years Scotland Learning Festival hub. Um, so please do get in touch if you would like to find out more about the portal in any way. Fantastic. Well, thank you again for um, sharing that with us. I think it's a, a fantastic piece of work. And I know when when I saw it, first of all, um, I was very impressed and it's definitely moved on a bit since then as well. So. So just how do other regions get involved? I would say, Margaret, speak to your central teams. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, certainly from our perspective, because I'm, I'm, you know, 
I'm part of quite a few SEAT groups um, and, and obviously everybody's, you know, all the authorities are in their own collaboratives. I think certainly it will be about reaching out to those collaborative groups, um, perhaps through the pedagogy pioneers, through different groups, just to kind of find out if people want to link in with things. Um, obviously, the pedagogy pioneers, we work closely with Michelle Matthews, who's from Scottish Borders Council, and, and obviously that, that will play a, a key part in sharing people should be able to share practice, but we do want this to, to represent good quality practice across um, the range. And really we've we've got a, a resource here that has no limitations for us. And, and that's the exciting part. But I suppose um, you know, if, my, if my boss was here, she'd be saying, you know, Remem remember the mantra of walk before you can run. So I think we, we just, as a group, we need to just make sure we do this all really effectively and have it correct for us and then open it wider and then just see how see how it grows and, and keep keep measuring that as well and making sure that we, we keep it current because I think in a, in a, anything you set up particularly when it's a digital platform we don't want it to be the same as the first phase of this work which was a huge amount of of work the pedagogical wheel and key, me, key message documents it was it was a huge amount of work and we, we ended up with great documents but actually when realizing the ambition came out they were they were stagnant documents that we really couldn't do anything with rather than update whereas this platform has has the potential for us just to keep adding and keep modifying keep tweaking and keep refreshing as and when is needed in a very easy way as well and hopefully once if, if other people would like to contribute and join up and make those links across the CIA group and across across Scotland then it should be a quite a, a relatively straightforward thing for people to do and and keep on top of as well. Fantastic well thank you so much um, for sharing that great piece of work with us all. Yep, the modern way of sharing. Um, <laughs> and it's also much more sustainable. We're not printing out paper and then having to Absolutely. bin it. It feeds into that as well. So um, I think we, we maybe can give everybody four minutes back um, and end the session now. And just a, another huge thank you and a big clap from everybody for you three for sharing thank your work you. with us today. Thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you and thank you thank everyone you. for attending. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.